Hey team, Jen here. I am coming to you at the top of week five. And um, as I noted in my written out announcement for this week, I'm really excited about week five. I feel like week five is uh, not only the midpoint for us in this term, and it's very significant in terms of um, giving us an opportunity to reflect and to set new goals, but it's also a week where we get really down and dirty with the soil of the American landscape through reading a variety of texts that really get us thinking about how um, Americans have positioned themselves in relation to their physical surroundings and, and sort of the aesthetic quality of those surroundings. So if you're a student who really appreciates um, aesthetics, if you're a student who really appreciates, you know, the look of things and um, how the human experience can be articulated in what we see. Um, certainly, we saw a lot of that with Edward Abbey's piece, but this week we're going to go a little bit deeper with that, I think, in terms of the politics of the landscape. Um, so in this week's overview video, I wanted to touch a little bit on Cactus Thorn. Uh, I have this right here, which is one of our uh, main readings for this week and offer some insights into uh, how we should think about or how we could think about the American landscape. The second thing that I'd like to do is I would like to reflect on your past journal guide post, gu journal guide posts and journal entries to give you some insights into what you can do this week to make your journals even stronger. And the final thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to note, let's say the top three things that I really want to see from you in your, in this week's major deliverable, major deliverable of your proposal in your annotated bibliography. Let me start today by saying that week five is a key moment for you to reflect. I am uh, the kind of instructor that feels as if the process of reflection is one of the most important processes that you can do um, in anything, really. So in week five, I would love to see a student maybe starting a thread in the student lounge asking us to reflect. And that reflection can take a lot of forms. Um, how I envision it happening is that now is a good time to look back at the goals that you set for yourself in the beginning of the term. Hopefully you did take my advice and you did set some. And thinking about where you are on that trajectory, um, how you're moving toward your goals, and of course, kind of revising those goals to be a bit more practical. I feel as if in the beginning of the term, our goals can be a little bit lofty. They can feel a little unrealistic. I'm just speaking from my own experience. So that the midway point gives us this great opportunity to really reimagine, reassess our development and um, set goals that are perhaps more within the boundaries of what we can accomplish in a 10 week period, um, which is something, but it isn't everything and it shouldn't be everything. I have been meeting with a couple students during online office hours. Uh, one of these students, I hope she doesn't mind me using this as an example, one of these students um, had a lot of anxiety about, you know, what, you know, I feel really overwhelmed with the scope of the course and the expectations. I feel like I'm really not anywhere near meeting a lot of those expectations. And so what we did is we set two firm goals for her to say, you know, uh, I asked her a series of questions about herself. And from that, we were able to say, okay, these are two firm things that I can work on this semester. Um, and the rest of it, I can kind of let fall away. But by the end of the term, I wanna be more proficient in these two areas and really put my energy into those two things. So like that student, this is a time where you can do something. You can say, these are, this is the you know top thing that I wanna do. These are the two things, the three things, or whatever that I wanna to move toward. You can use my comments that I've offered you on your deliverables to help that, uh, to help you to locate what needs the most work. But you can also just use your own sense, your own sensibilities. Where do you want to become stronger? Uh, Cactus Thorn this week is, it's an interesting read. Um, it's not one of my favorite reads, but I think that it 
it does bring a wealth of topics to consider that can really enliven the supplementary readings for this week and certainly enliven the readings that we've done so far. Uh, I'm thinking particularly of Desert Solitaire where the landscape does seem so important. It does seem, it seems dangerous. And it's certainly used to juxtapose um, Abby's sense of what it means to be human. Right. So in Cactus Thorn, we see something maybe similar to that, but certainly different. Um, one thing that Mary Austin does in Cactus Thorn for me is she's so blatantly, I mean, really from the first page, right, the first sentence even, she's just like in your face about how we ought to view um, her presentation of the landscape as a an articulation of the female experience, right? There's something feminine, female-esque about Austin's landscape here. And she never wants us to forget that, right? She never wants us to, um, to separate um, her protagonist, her heroine from that landscape. So the question that I always have is, what's the value of doing that? And I think that our supplementary readings this week can help us to answer those questions, um, that question in particular about the landscape. But beyond the feminine landscape, one thing that always comes to my mind um, is what about the masculine terrain? Does Austin give us something manly to consider as contrast in that feminine landscape? And where do we find that? Um, so, you know, you might keep that in mind as you read. I'm very interested to hear, too, what your unique way of reading will bring to our consideration of the text. I want to touch next on your journal writings. Um, the last set of journals that I received from students really blew my mind um, because I noticed something that I didn't expect would happen from the journals. Um, namely, what happened was Students who I have found to be very outspoken and jovial, very dynamic and personable in the discussion forums tended to be very reserved and kind of, uh, you know, play by play within the boundaries, uh, very terse, very vague, uh, seeming to be very almost cold and removed from the journal. And the opposite was true with students who seemed that way in the discussion forum. Uh, they seemed to be very warm and open and personable and playful almost in their journals. So I think it's important um, as we move into our next journal deliverable that you think about what the function of journal writing is for you. Um, certainly by the time that we get to Fair and Tender Ladies, we'll have a much, I love that novel, by the way, we'll have a much uh, clearer sense of how the journal or the letter writing um, genre can function because uh, the protagonist of Fair and Tender Ladies uses the letter writing genre, um, which feels to me a lot more like a journal entry, perhaps, but I think there's some conflation between those two. Um, but <clears throat> Um, to see that in action. But for now, as you move forth, I want you to think about what the journaling genre signifies for you. What does it, how is it different from other deliverables? It's so different, right? Some students really gravitate toward that difference and others kind of shy away from it. They're not sure what it is. So as you move forward, I want you to think about tapping in to what this very, very personable, very personal genre um, can mean for your development as a writer. Where do you find the value in a deliverable like this? Um, a student, for example, might start a thread on this in the student forum. That would be wonderful to help us to unpack some of those complexities. The final thing that I want to do today is I want to give you, let's say, my top three suggestions for your proposal and your annotated bibliography. Um, I try very hard in this course to be transparent about exactly what I think academic writing is. Um, and I hope that my supplementary videos along the way have helped you to grapple with that, um, either agreeing with me or disagreeing with me as you start to formulate your own sense of what this genre should be. In your uh, proposal, the thing that I want to see more than anything else is context, as I define it in my video on the pleasures of context. If you have not watched that video yet, please watch it now. 
And if you need to watch it again, please do so. Students have been meeting with me a lot to get from a broad topic to a context that is yours and yours alone. Um, in your proposal, it is paramount that you articulate the, the bare bones, the smallest nugget, right? The, the tiniest drop of context that you can give me. Um, I want to see you taking your topic ideas from last week and really refining those to be super, super, super specific. So specific, right? So I want you to, I want to see you juggling like 2,500 different things and taking one thing from each of those larger topics and marrying them together so that you have something that nobody else on earth could ever write about. Something that is so unique, so special. It is yours and yours alone, right? That's what I want to see in your proposal. Um, the second thing that I'd like to see is I would like to see you moving toward an argument. That is, for me, the second most important thing about an academic essay is that it takes a stand on something. It makes a judgment, a firm judgment. Um, I did include a supplementary video on argumentation last week, I believe, in week four. So make sure that you're going through and you're trying really hard to make a judgment. Keep in mind that in order to do that, you have to problematize an issue in your context first, right? You cannot make an argument if you haven't located a problem. It's not possible, right? It's not possible for you to do that. So you have to make a problem. You have to locate a problem first. Um, that's the second thing. The third thing that I want to see is I want you to really express to me the joy, the pleasure that you feel in exploratory research. Um, as an academic, you know, for me, one of the most exciting aspects of what I do is researching, just exploring and really kind of getting into uh, the facets of information that's out there at my fingertips. I really like to see students using a wide range of types of texts. So there, of course, there's the scholarly text. The last thing that I want to see is uh, essays that have been written about the primary text that you're choosing. So let me explain. For example, if you're writing about cactus thorn for your final research paper, the last thing that I want to see on your bibliography at this point is essays that other scholars have written about cactus thorn. For me, that should be the last step that you ever do in your in your researching, right? If you're not sure why, please watch my overview video this week on getting started with basic research. Um, what I do want to see instead is I want to see research that's going to help with your context, not your text. So there's a huge difference there, right? So ways that you can build up your context, of course, you want to look at scholarly research that's important when you're writing a scholarly essay. On the other hand, it shouldn't be the only kind of source that you're confronting. Take a look at blogs, take a look at reviews, take a look at movies, song lyrics, take a look at photographs, take a look at paintings, take a look at uh, interviews, take a look at everything, anything that you can get into. I personally love to just go into Amazon Kindle, look at the free books that are there that are not copyrighted, and take do keyword searches and find like these really rare antiquated books that might be able to strengthen my context. So you want to continue to develop your context through a really interesting, diverse, really unique bibliography. Oh, so exciting to think about. I can help you with that if you are not comfortable with that kind of exploratory research. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I think I've gone on for plenty long enough. I will see you here next week at the same time. Bye for now.